Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-2137. Object Class, Thaumiel, previously Euclid, and Keter. Special Containment Procedures. When not being used, SCP-2137 is to be kept within a typical electronic 10-digit metal safe in the safe wing of Site-23. All digital and wireless broadcast media must be kept at least 100 meters away from SCP-2137. Due to SCP-2137's anomalous effect having been determined to have no ranged limit, digital, wireless, and broadcast media may be used but should be monitored closely for any appearance of SCP-2137-1 or 2. Other than testing and recording of Track 7, SCP-2137 should be considered an inanimate item without agency of its own and any demands or threats made by SCP-2137-2 should be ignored. Once a week, SCP-2137 is to be cleaned and all tracks are to be played in succession with special attention paid to the instance of SCP-2137-1 that replaces Track 7. The names, situations, and anecdotes presented in that instance of SCP-2137-1 must then be reported to 2137 Special Committee, Pockwatch. On the rare occasion that non-Foundation organizations cannot address the situation presented in an instance of SCP-2137-1, 059 has given authorization to activate Mobile Task Force 339 to take any and all measures necessary to reach a resolution to the problem. Operational success will be indicated by a new instance of 2137-1. Personnel who wish to examine or attempt to interact with SCP-2137 must ask Dr. Kivowitz for authorization beforehand, which will then pend O5 clearance. Description SCP-2137 is a single compact disc copy of Me Against the World, a hip-hop album by the artist Tupac Shakur released in 1995. Physical examination, as well as laser testing, indicates that the CD was one of the initial release, manufactured and distributed in 1995. Conventional testing of the disc itself reveals identical results to a non-anomalous copy of the album. The case and liner notes have been determined to have no anomalous qualities, and the physical makeup and encoding of the disc appear completely normal. However, upon playing track 7, normally heavy in the game, the listener will encounter an instance of SCP-2137-1. The anomaly takes the form of spontaneously generated, professionally produced songs featuring Tupac Shakur in various styles within the hip-hop genre. Though each instance of SCP-2137-1 generated is unique, they share certain commonalities in terms of subject matter. The central focus of the song, invariably, addresses a crime, almost always a murder or series of murders, and then gives necessary anecdotal evidence or information to correctly identify and prosecute the killer, even going so far as to specify prosecutors or recommend vigilante justice. Though generation of SCP-2137-1 has been determined to have a definite causal nature, the manner in which SCP-2137-1 instances are copied onto SCP-2137 has yet to be ascertained. SCP-2137-2 The primary voice on the songs, from herein identified as SCP-2137-2, matches cleanly through advanced audio analysis to that of the real Tupac Shakur, who died in 1996, over a year before the recovery of SCP-2137. However, occasionally, on crimes of a particularly complicated or brutal nature, SCP-2137-2 will be joined by other performers, either guest rapping or singing the chorus or bridge. This has included many of Tupac's contemporaries, such as Snoop Doggy Dogg, Nas, No Doubt, Everclear, Weezer, and Busta Rhymes, as well as artists from the 2000s, including Chris Brown, Katy Perry, Lil Wayne, Lady Gaga, Rihanna, the Ying Yang Twins, Drake, Neon Trees, Jet, Jay-Z, Kanye West, and Eminem, usually at the height of their popularity. 
On a few notable occasions involving long unsolved crimes by still active criminals, there have been guests of a more blatantly anachronistic nature, standouts among whom include Phil Harris, the Andrews sisters, Frank Sinatra, Buddy Holly, The Who, Elvis Presley, Diana Ross, and The Beatles. Heavily anachronistic guests tend to take the role of primary artist. The song performed in their style, with SCP-2137-2 joining as a rap guest. When contacted, none of these artists had any recollection of recording for or information regarding SCP-2137. The crimes themselves share that they are unsolved or, in some cases, have escaped detection entirely. The majority of instances of SCP-2137-1 address crimes of private citizens such as serial killers, spree murderers, or career criminals, though occasionally the songs will address larger groups such as Hamas, ISIS, the IRA, and even in two separate instances, the Chaos Insurgency and the Church of the Broken God. A prototypical example of SCP-2137-1 is included here for reference. This is an excerpt from SCP-2137-1, Log 542. Now I gotta be doing detective work. After all this time, huh? Jeffrey Gertz still stalking the night Killed his brother and some strangers with the same damn knife Right It's not on my plans to tell you what to do uh. I know what I would do if I was you If I was you He hit the blade in the barn off North 111 He already killed six, don't make it seven Don't make it seven Be careful And play it smart When the crimes have been addressed and the guilty parties brought to light either by the legal system or otherwise, SCP-2137-1 is immediately replaced by a new instance. However, the track is easily recorded through conventional means. Recorded versions are not subject to change or replacement, and the original can be replayed from the CD endlessly before the killer is found with no or little variation. There are currently nearly 1,000 instances of SCP-2137-1 on record. Initial Recovery Log SCP-2137 was recovered in the home of Avon Lincoln, arrested for the vigilante slaying of Michael Ferris, who was later revealed to have been the Ojai Strangler responsible for six murders over the summer of 1996. Avon's insistence that Tupac Shakur spoke to him from beyond the grave and told him he had to take justice into his own hands because Ferris's position as district attorney would prevent a fair trial drew the attention of Foundation agents after the song in question was produced as evidence in court. Amnestics were administered to all involved, and Lincoln was released back into the general population. Addendum 1A – The XK Incident Initially, researchers experimented with anonymously tipping off local police departments through Foundation plants, which led to the resolution of over cold cases, including the recovery of SCP. SCP and SCP-617, though no direct link has been established other than the murders involved. However, after years, this use of the SCP was deemed impractical. Repeatedly addressing the crimes discussed in 2137's music was, in practice, allowing the SCP to dictate the circumstances of its containment, and under the wrong circumstances, opened the Foundation to potential exposure through continuous interaction with law enforcement at all levels across multiple governments. In response to this, 059 ceased addressing the crimes in late 2000. After two months passed, SCP-2137's behavior radically changed when, for the first time, an instance of SCP-2137-1 was produced that revealed SCP-2137-2 had an awareness of its containment. This is an excerpt from SCP-2137-1, Log 851. You said you all about security 
but you not good guys You redact and expunge, man, your silence is lost You said you here to protect, but the killers were free Don't let me show you how rough this outlaw can be You couldn't stop the beast, so don't you start that struggle You better watch your tone, unless you looking for trouble Man, you need to fall back and let me do my duty Locked in the drawer, feeling like you try to screw me You try to step up on my legacy You don't believe that I'm Tupac, I'm not just a CD The decision was made to halt testing entirely rather than acquiesce. After one week passed, an instance of SCP-2137-1 appeared spontaneously on the YouTube channel of Los Angeles-based hip-hop station, and in the lone hour before it was taken down, accrued over views. XK Scenario Incident the image displayed on the video was a still photograph, apparently authentic though its nature is highly anomalous. The photograph is of Shakur, estimated to be in his early 40s. It would be wise to note, at the time of his murder in 1996, Shakur was 25 years old, wearing the garb of Foundation D-Class personnel with his middle fingers raised. The accompanying song titled, focused on SCP, revealing its actual location and means by which it could be broken free of current containment procedures and identified several members of the O5 Council by their first names as it described the function and nature of the Foundation. In a massive sweeping operation involving activation of multiple task forces across continents, all trace of the video was erased and all viewers were administered Class A amnestics. Midway through this operation, an entire album titled XK Scenario was released to the iTunes account of Beyonce Knowles. Each song featured SCP-2137-2 as well as a variety of guest artists and focused on a different Keter-class SCP currently in captivity. Though SCP tracking bots were able to bring XK Scenario down only after downloads, complete digital eradication of the individual files has proven difficult. Though no loss of life or property was incurred, the sheer scale of the danger posed by this containment breach prompted a foundation-wide state of high alert. This prompted an ongoing upgrade to all automatic SCP firewalls and engendered the reclassification of SCP-2137 from Euclid to Keter. The breach sparked heated debate as to how to proceed with the containment of and conceptual understanding regarding SCP-2137 which came to an end upon the appearance of a new instance of SCP-2137-1. This instance was produced spontaneously through the mouth of SCP-2137, which appeared to fall into a trance state during the incident, with the lyrics in totality repeatedly written in what was identified as 117,000 times all over the interior of its containment chamber. This is an excerpt from SCP-2137-1, Log 564. You don't want to fall Dressed in black like you can't be seen I ride alone, I don't need no team Yeah, so do your job Cause I'm giving you tips And put that whole CD in the mix Biatch The decision was made to resume the former method of testing involving the embedded informants used to relay SCP-2137's evidence and information while continuing to study the method in which SCP-2137 transmits its broadcasts in an effort to truly contain it completely. SCP-2137-2 resumed its previous behavioral pattern, 
SCP-2137 ones focusing on crimes until their killers are located by conventional law enforcement, with the exception of one final track. At this time, its last recorded direct interaction with the Foundation. This is an excerpt from SCP-2137-1, Log 565. See? I knew y'all get me. <laughs> Listen. Y'all can't afford. Y'all cannot afford to lose. And y'all will lose going against me. So it's only right. It's only right. But now that we're on the same page, this is what I got for y'all. I guess it took time for it to sink in. I'm just glad you understood what I was thinking. I just knew you come around, so you see it now. It ain't no need to get upset or even throw down. You know I got the crown. I see it's hard to get some sleep at night. You got a head full of grates and your skin ain't tight. Huh. So let's be real, and ain't no need to fight it There's a grander design, I bet you gonna like it It's black and white, so don't get caught up in the deep thoughts You got my music on the side with a greater force Uh-huh Uh-huh You got my music on the side with a greater force Investigation into any kind of link or pattern between the crimes SCP-2137 solves is ongoing, as is interest to why it doesn't use its agency to pursue the criminals in question rather than working through proxies. Memorandum. Email from Site 515 Director Dr. Gwen Pristine to O5 Council regarding Tupac. This will be the fifth time I have written to propose an update to SCP-2371. When they enter our program here at Site-515, researchers, engineers, MTF troops, and even D-Class all walk in the door having read the official documentation, and believe the Foundation has been essentially blackmailed into cooperation with the devious SCP. But everyone who actually works here knows this is no longer the case. In the nearly three decades since its containment, the Foundation's collaboration with SCP-2137 has led to recovery of dozens of SCPs. Our mobile task forces have deposed dictators and toppled tyrants, chased down rogue reality benders from three Portlands to Lamplight, this of course all adjacent to the arrest or end of nearly 30,000 murderers. To add some perspective here, a serial killer hasn't made it past their third victim anywhere on Earth in 14 years. SCP-2137 has produced over 40,000 unique pieces of music. Function at Site-515 has become effectively frictionless. First, it was just the Suge Knights. But as we became more effective at addressing SCP-2137's instruction, another MTF joined, then an elite division. Which brings us up to the present, where the five mobile task forces under my command are in constant action against forces all over the planet Earth and beyond all under the guidance of detailed strategy provided by the mysterious music from a compact disc that the Foundation has failed to adequately contain. A silent, undocumented understanding has grown among us. The SCP does not simply catch murderers. It directly and aggressively searches out anything that maliciously takes a human life. The amount of lives saved and untold disasters that have been prevented through the Information 2137 supplies are at this point stupefying to contemplate much less that it has been able to essentially bully us into a pattern of unilaterally heroic expenditures of Foundation resources. It's little wonder that we show the highest numbers globally in Foundation morale test. It makes sense, of course. Here at Site 515, the SCP Foundation is a fast-action team of gunslinging heroes, smashing cults, blowing away terrorists, and catching murderers and monsters in our spare time as we blast rap music out of a landing attack hovercraft, or working behind the scenes, turning local cops into super sleuths and vigilantes into heroes. But this period, as productive as it's been, has been intellectually stagnant. Throughout all of this, the motives and origin of 2137 remain a mystery defying every search for a pattern, every algorithm-driven analysis. The research wing of the site has become a ghost town, as the MTF response barracks have grown to dominate everything, and perhaps rightfully so. But a few young researchers have diligently continued to hunt for meaning, for greater truth behind SCP-21371. An unexpected advance in this area is behind the urgency in my message to you today. 
It had long been understood that the life of the actual Tupac Shakur held little information or relevance toward the mystery of SCP-2137's existence. This has potentially changed. Researcher Mariha Kozlovich recently came across an unreleased interview with Shakur from 1994, two years before his death and three before the discovery of SCP-2137. The interview was buried by his managers because there was anxiety about Shakur's mental state in the footage, because he was speaking what they called nonsense. I think you will agree that while Mr. Shakur may not have been speaking clearly, what he actually says is very possibly of vital interest to the Foundation, and very definitely not nonsense. I feel we may finally have, if not an answer, the beginnings of one. But I can say with certainty that in my entire time at the Foundation, I have never personally felt this excited. So I start my proposal here. A Keter-level object actively interested in aiding the human race is not a Keter-level object at all. I am officially resubmitting my proposal for SCP-2137 to at long last be redesignated a Thaumule-class object, and for a quadrupling of our research team and a site resource allocation. We must tug this thread and see where it leads us. Perhaps after hearing the audio attached, you will finally agree. Dr. Gwen Pristine, Site Director, 515. Document. Recovered footage, 1L. Tupac Shakur, dressed casually, sits on a large red couch, smoking a marijuana cigarette. Hunched forward and visibly intoxicated, with drooping eyes and slightly slurred speech. He seems happy and jovial, and laughs often through the interview despite repeatedly becoming distracted by the presence of his entourage dancing and talking in the room. His director and videographer Gobi Rahimi sits nearby, and VH1 interviewer Mila Vendi, also visibly intoxicated, sits nearby. The relevant portion begins 9 minutes and 14 seconds into the interview. People ask me where I get my inspiration from. <laughs> they say, how do you go so hard and put in that much work? But what they don't understand is <laughs> this is me taking a break. This is me on vacation. I think some people will say that was irresponsible to just sit back, be human for a while, be an artist, experience that. I can't be chasing the king all the time. I feel like I've been doing that forever to protect you, all of you. He's not so big. Hank, you're not so small. But, 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 but he's got to trick you like it doesn't matter because that's the only way that he can keep it looking like he's the man. Like he's some big, bad, evil motherfucker. <laughs> you don't see that when I die, I'll live on. My death is my destiny. And then I become something else. What I was before. The voice will still shout, and it will shout justice, and poetry, and art, and music. I got you. I got you, humanity. When I eventually go toe-to-toe -to -toe and brawl with this fool, he's going to gather up his little red dress and go home crying like a bitch, and he knows it. Evil knows his days are numbered. So the king is still running. The chase isn't over. Prepare. Prepare. <laughs> Prepare. You know, working for a foundation such as this, it's kind of heartwarming to see that not every anomalous entity out there is malevolent. For once, a thalmiel class object that can't be contained is kind of a good thing. Maybe most people will disagree with me. Who knows? Anyway, I think that about does it for today. Thank you all for listening, if indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to It's Not a Spoon, Corey Barker, Arbiter Soul, Retalius, 
Karim El Ashmoui, Seven Past Midnight, Matthew Gilmore, Thanama Tekik, Eric Corbidge, Kawaii Firekeeper, Joker Corvus, King Madding, Bryson, Samurai Corgis, James Saba, NJ Vujak, and Justin Day. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash the Vulcan. Thank you.